This video is going to focus on empirical versus molecular formulas. These are two types of formulas that can be used to represent a compound. The difference between the two is that an empirical formula is always going to be reduced as much as possible. The numbers are in their lowest possible form. Whereas a molecular formula is not necessarily in the lowest possible form. A molecular formula is going to count the actual number of atoms present. Let's look at some examples. This is a molecular formula, N2O4. Notice that two and four are both divisible by two. You could reduce those numbers to get to a lower form. So the empirical formula for this molecular formula is NO2, where both of the subscripts have been reduced They've both been divided by two. Here's another example. C6H14 is a molecular formula. It is not in the lowest possible form. Both of those numbers are divisible by two. So the empirical formula for this molecular formula is C3H7. A final example is C6H12O6, 12 where all of these numbers are divisible by six which would give you an empirical formula of CH2O. Here is an example where we have been asked to calculate an empirical formula. The question is, a compound contains 38.67% carbon, 16.22% hydrogen, and 45.11% nitrogen. Find the empirical formula. So the first thing, step one, is to write those percentages in units of grams. So what you're doing here is assuming that you have a 100 gram sample. So 38.67% carbon becomes 38.67 grams of carbon. 16.22% hydrogen becomes 16.22 grams of hydrogen. Notice that I'm not moving any decimals to go back and forth between a percentage. I'm just simply taking away the percent sign and writing grams instead. That is step one for finding an empirical formula. Step two is to convert from grams to moles. So I'm going to take this number of grams divide it by the molar mass of the periodic table to find the number of moles for each of these atoms. So I've converted to moles for carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen in all cases by dividing by the molar mass of the periodic table. Step three is to divide all of the mole values by the smallest mole value. So here are my mole values. 3.22, 16.09, and 3.22. Which number is the smallest? In this case, 3.22 is the smallest. So I'm going to divide all of those numbers by 3.22. I did it for carbon and got a one. For hydrogen, 16.09 divided by 3.22 gives me a five. And for nitrogen, 3.22 divided by 3.22 gives me a one. These numbers that I've found become the subscripts in your equation. There is going to be one carbon, five hydrogens, and one nitrogen in your empirical formula. In this case, all of these numbers were whole numbers, so they were perfectly fine to go into the empirical formula just as they were. However, if one of them had not been a whole number, you could multiply all of them by something to get them up to a whole number. Now that we have seen how to calculate an empirical formula, let's look at how we can take an empirical formula and turn it into a molecular formula. This is the process we're going to be following. You take the molar mass of the molecular formula, and this is usually given to you in the question, and you divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula which you very often have to calculate. This is going to give you some whole number, and that is the whole number that you're going to multiply the empirical formula by. Let's look at an example. A compound has a molar mass of 220.1 grams per mole and an empirical formula of CO2. What is the molecular formula? Let's take a peek at the information we're given. This compound, the molecule, 
has a molar mass of 220.1 grams per mole. That is the molar mass of the molecular formula. It's not super obvious the way it's written, but that is the molar mass of the molecular formula. That's going to be my top number in this equation. Then they gave me the empirical formula. I can use this information to calculate the molar mass of the empirical formula. So at this point, I'm going to go to the periodic table and calculate the molar mass of the empirical formula. Carbon dioxide has one carbon and two oxygens, giving it a total molar mass of 44.01. That's going to be my bottom number in this equation. So my top number was given to me in the problem, my bottom number I've calculated. I plug those in and divide them. This should give you a whole number. So my whole number, the number that it gave me was a five. This is the number I'm going to multiply my empirical formula by. So my empirical formula was CO2. There was one carbon times five. In my molecular formula, there are five carbons. My empirical formula had two oxygens times five. In my molecular formula, there are 10 oxygens. So I have an empirical formula that I have multiplied by some whole number to get my molecular formula. So this is the equation that you want to use to figure out what to multiply your empirical formula by to get your molecular formula. And this, in my opinion, is one of the kinder examples because they've given you the empirical formula. Next, what we're going to look at is an example where we have to calculate the empirical formula and then calculate the molecular formula. So here is an example where we are not given an empirical formula. In some situations, you are required to determine the empirical formula before you can calculate the molecular formula. So here's the question. Nicotine contains 74.0% carbon, 8.70% hydrogen, and 17.3% nitrogen. It has a molar mass, nicotine, the molecule, has a molar mass of 162.2 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula for nicotine? So we're going to follow the steps for writing an empirical formula. Step one is to write your percents as grams. So each one of these percentages, I'm taking the percent sign off and writing them as grams. I now have 74 grams of carbon, 8.7 grams of hydrogen, and 17.3 grams of nitrogen. Step two for writing an empirical formula is to convert your gram values to moles. So for carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, I have divided by the molar mass off the periodic table to get these mole values. 6.16 moles of carbon, 8.63 moles of hydrogen, and 1.23 moles of nitrogen. Step three for an empirical formula is to take whichever mole value is the smallest, in this case nitrogen, and divide all of the mole values by that value. So since nitrogen was the smallest, I've taken each of the mole values and divided them by 1.23. 6.16 divided by 1.23 gives me a 5. 8.63 divided by 1.23 gives me a 7. And then 1.23 divided by itself gives me a 1. So these are the values that become the subscripts in my empirical formula. My empirical formula for nicotine is C5H7N. It goes on to tell me that nicotine has a molar mass of 162.2 grams per mole. So I'm going to be turning this empirical formula into a molecular formula that must have this molar mass. Here's the equation I want to use. I want to take the molar mass of the molecular formula and divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. The molar mass of the molecular formula was given to me in the question. The molar mass of the empirical formula I can calculate because here is my empirical formula. So I can go to the periodic table, add up the masses of five carbons, seven hydrogens, and one nitrogen. That has a molar mass of 81.12 grams per mole. So that is my bottom number. Then I take the molecular formula's mass, divide it by the empirical formula's mass, and at this point I should get a whole number. In this case, my whole number is a two. 
That is the number that I'm going to multiply my empirical formula by. So here was my empirical formula. It had five carbons. Five times two is 10. My molecular form formula has 10 carbons. It had, the empirical formula had seven hydrogens times two. My molecular formula has 14. Nitrogen just had one in the empirical formula times two. The, the molecular formula has two nitrogens. So the molecular formula for nicotine, the actual molecule, has 10 carbons, 14 hydrogens, and two nitrogens. The empirical formula for nicotine, if you were to ratio those down to the smallest value, would be C5H7N.